Bonjour les amis! Today we are going to look at reciprocal verbs in the present tense and maybe some of the other tenses too. ER ones. What are reciprocal verbs? They are pronominal verbs, a category of pronominal verbs, but they are the verbs that are done to, we say in English, either each other or one another. So, because there's more than one person involved, we only use the plural. So there's no need of me, myself, and te, yourself. We only need the se, nous, and vous. So that would be themselves, ourselves, and yourselves. On se, nous, nous, vous, vous, il, elle, se. So thinking of reciprocal, things that you do to each other, what does se mean? Yes, to like or to love one another, each other. Past participle is aimé. These are all ER verbs, so that past participle it is easy. It's got E, acute accent on. And I will explain why we may need to put an extra E or an extra S on there. Plus tard, later. We like each other very much. On s'aime beaucoup. On nous nous aimons beaucoup. They don't love each other anymore. Il ou elle ne s'aime plus. Se détester. To detest one another. Past participle, nice and easy, just becomes E, acute accent. Détester. We have detested one another since our childhood. On se déteste depuis notre enfance. So it's a funny one, this, because in English we use one of the past tenses. We have detested. But when we use depuis in French, if it's still true today, we use the present tense. On se déteste depuis notre enfance. Or nous nous détestons depuis notre enfance. Do you remember this one from a long time ago? The drumming, the African drums. As much as. Autant que, autant que, autant que. Autant que, autant que, autant que. Or some people can't be bothered to say oh, they just say tant que, tant que, tant que. Tant que, tant que, tant que. As much as that, autant que ça, tant que ça. Why do they hate each other as much as that? Pourquoi il ou elle se déteste autant que ça, autant que ça? Se disputer, what does it mean? To argue with one another. Past participle, disputer. Non-stop. We have the infinity sign there, is sans arrêt. Remember, no T. Can't hear the T at the end. Sans arrêt. Sans cesse. You can even say non-stop. Why do you argue non-stop, you two? Pourquoi vous vous disputez sans arrêt ou sans cesse ou non-stop, vous deux? Do they argue as much as that? Ils se disputent Autant que ça, autant que ça. S'embrasser. It means to kiss one another. S'embrasser. Past participle, embrasser. You kiss each other non-stop. It's embarrassing for others. Vous vous embrassez sans arrêt ou sans cesse ou non-stop. C'est gênant pour les autres. Remember, gêner, to bother. You can use embarrassant, but gênant is used so much more. Do they kiss each other as much as that? Il ou elle s'embrasse autant que ça, autant que ça. Se donner. To give one another past participle, donner. We're going to look at some expressions using donner un coup de, un coup. We've used un coup to mean like um, to go for a little drink. Aller boire un coup. Okay, so it can mean several things. It can mean a little, like let's go for a little drink. Un petit coup. It can mean a shot. It can mean a hit. It can mean a blow. And just little, just something small. It's used a lot in French. I say that a lot, don't I? Because I'm trying to teach you the useful stuff. Un coup de main. To give someone a helping hand, a little hand. A hand. You see, the rest are not so nice. Un coup de 
pied means a kick. That is how you say a kick. Un coup de pied. Un coup de poing. Poing. The fist. Punch. Un coup de tête. You're going to knock someone. Un coup de tête. Un coup de coude. This is your coude. It could hurt you. Elbowed. Un coup de couteau. Means to stab. Another way to say it is poignard. The poignet is your wrist. The poignet. Okay. To stab. Hopefully you don't need that one. Un coup de téléphone. Okay. A little phone call. Give us a quick call. Fil. From the days when phones had wires. Is a wire. We help each other when it's necessary. We give each other a little hand. On se donne un coup de main quand c'est nécessaire. Another way of saying is quand il le faut. Nous nous donnons un coup de main. You swallow the de a lot. When people speak fast, they're going to swallow the de. Un coup de main quand c'est nécessaire. Quand il faut, quand il faut. Get used to the merging French. They kick each other under the table all the time. Il ou elle se donne des coups de pied sous la table tout le temps. Tout le temps, coup de pied. Punch! If you think you had some paint on your fist, you would leave a mark like a dot. And dot in French is point, 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 like when you do your email address, point, com, point. And it sounds the same. It's not spelt the same, but it sounds the same. Donner des coups de poing. Punches. To be allowed is to have the right. Avoir le droit de. You're not allowed to punch each other. Vous n'avez pas le droit, pas le droit de vous donner des coups de poing. To telephone. Donner un coup de téléphone, donner un coup de fil. Feel, donner un coup de fil is still used a lot. Feel, as I said, means it can mean thread. It can mean wire. We have filiatures, don't we, in our light bulbs. We telephone each other three times a day. On se donne, on se donne un coup de téléphone trois fois par jour. Un coup de fil trois fois par jour. Nous nous donnons un coup de téléphone, un coup de fil, trois fois par jour. Could you say, c'est téléphoner. To telephone one another. Téléphoner, passe participle. Do you telephone each other every day? Vous vous téléphonez tous les jours? We used to. Mm, we used to. We used to telephone each other for hours. Used to. Used to is the imperfect. We need our imperfect ending now. On se téléphonait. Pendant des heures. Pendant. Oh, the grandfather clock there. Pendant. Nous nous téléphonions. I-O-N-S. Pendant des heures. So, téléphoner in the imperfect. You take the new stem and you add the endings A I S A I S A I T I O N S I Z A I E N T. And remember the last one, the il elle téléphoné, sounds like the first three. Je téléphonais, tu téléphonais, il elle en téléphoné. So four of them sound the same, the first three and the last one. The two middle ones are téléphonion, you've got the E sound, and téléphonié. Se quitter. Okay. To leave one another. It can just mean, you know, we both went to work. On s'est quitté. To go on one's way. Or it can mean we separated. Quitté, past participle. We're separating, we're leaving one another. On se quitte. Nous nous quittons. They separated. They separated Ed last year. Hmm. It is the present perfect. 
all pronominal verbs, including reciprocal verbs, have the auxiliary verb être. They were our wannabe VIP verbs. Okay, we had the VIP verbs, which were the verbs of movement like aller, venir, monter, descendre. There's only a small group of them, around 15. The much bigger group, these wannabe VIP verbs, are the pronominal verbs. They all go with the auxiliary être when you are talking in the present perfect. Il ou elle se sont. You have to conjugate être now, not avoir, because it's être the auxiliary. Il, elle se sont quittés l'année dernière. Instead of se quitter, you could say se séparer if it's something a bit more permanent. Se parler, to talk or to speak to one another. Parler. What are they talking to each other about? This in French would be expressed as about what, first of all. You could actually stick it on the end as well. So what's about? About is de. De can mean about, de can mean of, de can mean from, de can mean by. <laughs> Right, and now the duck. This is thanks to Lynn for this suggestion. Qua, qua, qua. Okay, de quoi il ou elle se parle. The word what can be different in French depending on the context. We will do that another time. De quoi il ou elle se parle. This is a quoi duck. We haven't spoken to each other yet. Haven't. Present perfect. Don't forget where yet goes. On ne sait pas encore parler. Not yet. So in French, they would say, we have not yet spoken to each other. Nous ne sommes pas encore parlé. Se regarder. To look at one another. Past participle. Regarder. Why are you looking at each other like that? Pourquoi vous vous regardez comme ça? Ha ha, Tommy Cuba, comme ça. We used to look at each other for hours. Used to is the imperfect. On se regardait pendant des heures. Pendant, grandfather clock. Pendant. Nous nous regardions pendant des heures. Imperfect, you take the nous stem. Je regardais, tu regardais, il, elle, on regardait, nous regardions, vous regardiez, il, elle, regardait. Sounds like the first three. What is the imperfect? Okay, we have this picture. The imperfect is used for setting the scene, which is why we have the curtains there. Like once upon a time, il était une fois. It's used for the wasing and whirring. It's the past tense. We don't know if it's finished yet. It might have finished. It might not have finished. It doesn't matter. Okay. I was looking. You were looking, wasing, whirring. That's the spinning top. In English, the imperfect is also used to. I used to. Something that you used to do habitually or frequently or not frequently or never. Right, that's the baby, the used to, when I was younger, when I was a baby. And then we have the meandering path. Because the present perfect, the action's perfected, it's over. Hmm, it's not such a splat with the imperfect, it's more of a meandering line. The action may be finished, might not be finished. And we have our Zen lady, who's in touch with her emotions. It's often used to talk about emotions. And she's pretty Zen. We don't know when the action started. We don't know when the action finished. It doesn't matter. So raconter. To tell one another. So we've got dire, of course, but raconter is used more for when you're telling a story, telling a joke, that kind of thing. Recounting, like recounting a tale. Past participle, raconter. Nice expression. Raconter des salades. What on earth? Well, here we have our tall animal, the giraffe, telling a tall tale, and he's just munching on the salad to help you remember the French one. We also have the expression to spin a yarn, spin a salad. Okay, 
That's the equivalent of raconter des salades. They're telling each other tall tales. Il ou elle se raconte des salades. We would tell each other everything. So used to in English could be replaced by the word would. We would. We used to tell each other everything. Used to brings up the imperfect. Nous nous racontions tout. On se racontait tout. Imperfect. Take the nous stem of the present tense of your verb and add those special endings. Se taquiner. You might not know this one. Tac, tac, tac. Tic-tac. <laughs> Tic-tacs teasing each other. So taquiner means to tease. Taquiner, past participle. We're always teasing each other. Nous nous taquinons toujours. On se taquine toujours. They tease each other non-stop. Il ou elle se taquine sans arrêt, sans cesse, non-stop. Don't tease one another. Ne vous taquinez pas. Not that you would ever say this, I hope not. If you were going to say tease each other, using the imperative in the positive way, the positive command, your vous has to then move to the other side and be hooked on with a hyphen, like taquinez-vous. <laughs> Se rencontrer. To meet one another, past participle, rencontrer. The spies meet in hiding, in hiding, en cachette. Sometimes SP words in English are e acute accent in French. Think of espionnage. Thank you, Marilyn. Les espions se rencontrent en cachette. Where were you meeting up when you were spies? You might not use this phrase. But hey, it could be in a French film. Vous vous rencontriez, because it's the wasing, you were meeting. Vous vous rencontriez où, quand vous étiez espion. We met for the first time in 1975. You need to revise your numbers. Jonathan. Nous nous sommes rencontrés pour la première fois en 1975. Oh, on s'est rencontrés pour la première fois en 1975. Se retrouver. This means to meet up with one another. Where shall we find each other when we meet up? Past participle, retrouver. You've got the meeting point sign there and two people greeting. Where are we meeting up? Nous nous retrouvons où? On se retrouve où? They're meeting up this afternoon. Il ou elle se retrouve cet après-midi. Cet après-midi is sometimes called cet après-midi for short. Cet après-midi. An old-fashioned word, but I'm going to teach you it anyway because if ever you read French classics, this word will show up a lot. And the word is tantôt. We've got, we've got bientôt. This is tantôt. It has a few meanings. It can mean this afternoon, tantôt. It can mean presently, tantôt. It can mean soon, tantôt. It can mean just now, tantôt. Did you meet up just now? So how would you say that normally? There's a special way of saying it in French, which you may not remember. So tantôt could help you not have to remember. Vous vous êtes retrouvés tantôt. Because otherwise, you have to use the venir de plus the infinitive. Vous venez de vous retrouver. Tantôt, consider learning it. Se croiser. Une croix is a cross. It's like crossing each other. Bumping into each other unexpectedly. Past participle, croiser. We always bump into each other on the way to the tube station. Nous nous croisons toujours en route pour la station de métro. Station de métro. On se croise toujours. You could use the present continuous. En allant. En allant à la station de métro. Instead of en route. Where did you bump into one another? 
Vous vous êtes croisé où? They would bump into each other at the sailing school. They would. They used to. Imperfect. Il, elle se croisait à l'école de voile. Voile is a sail. Voile. L'école de voile can be a voile, a veil as well. Se ressembler. To look like, to resemble one another. Ressembler, past participle. You look very much alike. I put some alternatives to very much. You can say vous vous ressemblez beaucoup, but there we have the cow for vachement and or drôlement. Common expressions. Il ou elle se ressemble comme deux gouttes d'eau. The equivalent in English is they're like two peas in a pod. Literally, like two drops of water. We used to look alike when we were younger. We used to. Imperfect. Nous nous ressemblions quand nous étions plus jeunes. Bon. On se ressemblait quand on était plus jeunes. Se frapper. Frapper. Okay. To hit, to strike one another. Past participle. Frapper. My children hit each other non-stop. Mes enfants se frappent. You can add the preposition dessus. Dessus. Se frappe dessus sans arrêt, sans cesse, non-stop. Why are they always hitting each other? Pourquoi il ou elle se frappe toujours? Don't hit one another. Ne vous frappez pas. And if you're some kind of psycho, hit each other. Frappez-vous. Hooked on with a hyphen. Okay, let's have a practice. S'aimer. To like, to love one another, to détester, to hate one another, se disputer, to argue, s'embrasser, mm, kiss one another, se donner, give one another, se téléphoner, to telephone one another, à vous, how do you say to like, to love one another, s'aimer, to hate one another, se détester, to argue, se disputer, to kiss one another, s'embrasser, to give one another, se donner, to telephone one another, se téléphoner, what se quitter, to leave one another, se parler, to speak, to talk to one another, se regarder, to look at one another, se raconter, to tell one another, se taquiner, annoying tic tacs, taking the mickey out of each other, S to tease one another. À vous, what's to leave one another? Se quitter, to speak, to talk to one another, se parler. To look at one another, se regarder, to tell one another, se raconter, to tease one another, se taquiner. And the last lot, se rencontrer means to meet one another, se retrouver, to meet up with one another, se croiser, to bump into one another unexpectedly. Se ressembler. To look like. Resemble one another. Se frapper, se frapper dessus. To hit or to strike one another. À vous. To meet one another. Se rencontrer. To meet up with one another. Se retrouver. To bump into one another. Se croiser. To look like, resemble one another. Se ressembler. To hit or to strike one another. Se frapper. Se frapper dessus. Dessus. Okay, I mentioned why the E's and S's were in brackets for the past participles. 
Okay, I'm going to try and simplify this as much as possible. For example, using the feminine, they teased one another. The sudha means one another. Okay, they are direct. They are directly teasing each other. So the su is the direct object pronoun. So the past participle is meant to agree. Actually, with ER verbs, you can't hear the difference. So you can just skip all this because it doesn't matter for ER verbs. But just in case you wonder why there's E's or S's or whatever. All right, so there's an agreement. So the L is feminine. There's more than one. You add an extra E and an extra S in. As I said, it doesn't change the sound of the word. If, however, your verb is something like dunny and you give something to someone, it's followed by the preposition a. It's not always a, but it's usually the preposition a. So they're not giving each other because you have to give each other something. So now the s becomes an indirect object. Okay, because in this example, elles se sont donné la main pour monter les escaliers. They gave each other the hand, is how you say they held each other's hands. They gave each other the hand to go up the stairs. Okay, so the direct object is the hand. They gave the hand to each other. So the each other now becomes the indirect object pronoun. For some reason now, there is no agreement. So the verbs that we've been using here are parler à, there won't be an agreement. Téléphoner à, there won't be an agreement. Donner à, there won't be an agreement. But all the other ones, there would be an agreement with the subject. However, if you can see that on the on the middle example there, la main, which was the thing that was given, la main was given, comes after the past participle, donné. If the thing that you are referring to goes before, before the past participle, now they had the bright idea that you should make it agree. Yeah, you should. Okay? And it has to agree with the direct object. So, elle se la, let's imagine la is referring to the hand. Elle se la sont donné. La now comes before the past participle. And now they want you to make it agree with that direct object, which here is la. Wonderful. It doesn't matter for ER verbs. For some of the irregular verbs, there may be a change in sound. I'd say just forget it and get it wrong. Merci les amis. Au revoir.